Our nation is indeed at a crossroads. Will we pursue the search for truth or will we dodge, weave, and evade the truth? I am, of course, referring to the investigation into serious allegations of illegal conduct by the President of the United States, that the President has engaged in a persistent pattern and practice of obstruction of justice. Turn our discussion now is Paul Rosenzweig. He's the former senior counsel on the special prosecutor Kenneth Starr's team who prosecuted President Bill Clinton. Uh, he recently wrote that there is ample reason to begin an impeachment inquiry against President Trump. He's currently a senior fellow at the R Street Institute. Uh, and Paul, what is it like when you see people like Mitch McConnell, uh, Lindsey Graham, and the video from yesteryear, when you were on the same side, of, uh, you, you viewed the impeachment of a president the same way and the investigation of a president the same way. And to see them today uh, with no, uh, nothing but defensive comments or more likely nothing to say about what President Trump has done. Cognitive dissonance. I mean, it's just, uh, it's very difficult for me to understand how you could have held that view 20 years ago and yet today be unwilling to follow the logic of your of your past history it just it's disappointing you know, in many ways i thought politics was more about principle than apparently it is uh, in the piece you wrote i, I re reviewed that your review of what the obstruction evidence was against bill clinton and it was it, some of it was just a conversation he had with one of the staff members right outside of his office door where he would say to her well I didn't do anything with Monica Lewinsky, right? And and he claimed that he was just refreshing his memory with her. He wasn't trying to tell her what to say. Um, the Donald Trump obstruction evidence is much clearer and solid than that, isn't it? I, in my judgment, yes. I mean, if you accept what Don McGahn, the White House counsel, ha has reported to have said, he was actually directed first to fire Mueller, itself possibly an obstructive act, but then certainly obstruct obstruct obstructive when he was asked to create a false record of the earlier conversation and falsely deny that it had happened. That's kind of a classic instance of tampering with a witness's memory. And it was much blunter, if you will, much more direct than the somewhat subtle efforts of, of President Clinton. You know, I, I wasn't any longer working in the Senate during the Clinton impeachment, but I had a lot of contact with Democratic senators. And I remember when they started the process, when they knew, oh boy, this impeachment case is coming to the Senate, we're going to be jurors. A bunch of them expected to someday come across that passage somewhere that would explain to them exactly what high crime and misdemeanor was. <clears throat> and I can remember, actually, uh, Senator Moynihan, who was scholar in his scholarly way, trying to find that one day, just uh, saying to me, uh, uh, well, it turns out it's whatever we say it is, uh, meaning there is no judicial review about it, so it's, it's really kind of up to them. <clears throat> and what his position was, and many Democrats was, was they, they weren't contesting the evidence at all. They didn't contest any of the evidence that you presented. They simply said, we hear you, we hear your case, we don't believe this rises to the level uh, that deserves removal. Uh, and so that's not what we get from Republicans. Uh, Republicans are saying there's nothing here. Lindsey Graham is saying there's nothing here. I, I think that's right. I mean, it would be more sensible and perhaps consistent to say, I hear you, the evidence is, is, is fair, but it doesn't rise to a level of impeachment. We shouldn't put the country through that. There's an election coming up, as your last set of guests said, that will really decide the issue, so let's leave it to them. Those are all plausible arguments, but to deny, as, as Attorney General Barr did, the actual import of the facts and to say that this does not constitute obstruction when on a weaker set of facts 20 years ago, people said, oh, that's definitely obstruction of justice, is, is to blink reality, I think. So, so there's no question in your mind that the obstruction case against Bill Clinton was, which you prosecuted, was weaker than the obstruction case against Donald Trump? I, I thought both were strong, mm -hmm. uh, but if you're, if you're kind of measuring their meritoriousness, yeah. um, the pervasiveness of, of the president's activities today, and as we said, the bluntness with which he proceeded, the kind of directive nature of it, makes this, in my judgment, certainly an easier case to prove. I'll put it that way. Paul Rodenswag, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thanks really for having me. I appreciate it. Paul Rodenswag gets tonight's last word. The 11th Hour with Brian Williams starts now.